the surprising royal who may be the first to reunite with Meghan and Harry in Canada. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry will not be short of visitors in Canada as the Duchess has a big group of friends from her acting days when she lived in Toronto, but when it comes to royal guests the couple could be short of callers. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex carried out their final public engagement as senior royals on Monday with just three weeks to go until they step into their new independent roles. They joined the Queen, 93, the Prince Charles, 71, and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge at the Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey. Meghan, 38, who left Archie behind on Vancouver Island when she flew to the UK last week, stunned in a bright green ensemble for her last engagement less than two years after she married into the royal family. It is not known when exactly the pair will head back to join their 10-month-old son in Canada and kickstart their new beginning outside of the royal system. But from March 31st, Harry, 35, and American-born Meghan will no longer use their HRH styles as they pursue a new life of personal and financial freedom, predominantly in North America. On that date Meghan will bow out of royal life just one year, 10 months and 12 days, or 682 days, after tying the knot with the sixth in line to the throne. One royal who has an upcoming trip planned to the Great White North may be the first family member to reunite with the pair across the pond. The Princess Royal, 69, will arrive in Canada on May 1 for a three-day trip in the role as Commodore-in-Chief of the Royal Canadian Navy. Princess Anne was named the hardest-working royal for a third year in a row in 2019. The Queen's only daughter put in a total of 167 engagements ahead of Prince Charles' 125. Harry and Meghan's goodbye tour has included the Endeavour Fund Awards, the Mountbatten Musical Festival at the Royal Albert Hall and Meghan's secret visit to a school in Dagenham, East London, to celebrate International Women's Day. Monday's Commonwealth Service, broadcast around the globe on the BBC World Service, was the symbolic end of their life supporting the Queen. Meghan was seen to mouth high and give a small wave to William and Kate, followed by a hello, as the Cambridges took their seat in the high altar in the row in front of the Sussexes. Harry also said hello and smiled at his brother. Prince Edward partly rose to greet the Cambridges, but Sophie and the Sussexes remained seated. Meghan later chatted animatedly to the Earl of Wessex as they waited for the Queen to arrive. Harry joined the conversation and put his arm on the back of Meghan's chair. As the members of the royal family arrived they were introduced to a line of dignitaries, including Prime Minister Boris Johnson, but no one shook hands as they greeted each other. It is understood the Queen and other royals were following the protocol the Abbey has been operating under during the past few days following the coronavirus outbreak. When Meghan and Harry first arrived they were greeted by the Dean of Westminster, the very relevant Dr. David Hoyle, and met a group of dignitaries including Mr. Johnson and Baroness Scotland. Meghan chose a green Amelia Wickstead dress with a dramatic asymmetrical cape for her final royal outing. She topped the look off with a classy William Chambers hat with flamboyant netting. The Duchess of Cambridge, 38, wore a red Catherine Walker outfit and a hat by Sally Ann Provan. Prince Harry will end up as a butler as Duke and Meghan Markle prepare for royal exit. Prince Harry will end up as a butler according to former editor of The Sun, Kelvin McKenzie, who hit out at the Duke of Sussex for stepping down as a senior member of the royal family with Meghan Markle. Prince Harry, 35, and Meghan Markle, 38, will officially step down as senior royals on March 31 as they attend their last royal engagement with the royal family at Westminster Abbey. The Commonwealth Day service will be the first time the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are seen in public since their announcement to be financially independent. But former editor of The Sun, Kelvin McKenzie, has argued Harry will end up as a butler. Speaking on ITV's Good Morning Britain, Mr. Mackenzie said, I've never seen anybody so welcome to our country as Meghan. Honestly, it was fantastic. I will always remember her mother in that carriage heading towards Windsor Castle, it was a fantastic scene. I wonder what the mother thought at that time and I massively admire Meghan. She came from nothing and ended up at the top. Harry, started at the top, ending up down the bottom. It's a very funny thing. He added, 
he's going to end up as a butler. When the phone rings, it won't be for him. That marriage will last shorter than some of mine. This final official appearance is a poignant milestone as they prepare to embark on their future away from the royal family. Meghan will bow out of royal life just one year, 10 months and 12 days, or 682 days, after marrying into the family. The televised service at the Abbey is a key annual event in the calendar for the Queen who is head of the Commonwealth. But this year's ceremony is likely to be remembered for being Harry and Meghan's royal swan song. The Commonwealth Service will also be the first time the Duke and Duchess have appeared with the royal family since their bombshell Megxit announcement in January. Tradition dictates that Harry, who is not a future king, sits with Meghan in the second row of seats behind the Queen, Charles, Camilla, William and Kate during the service. The Duke and Duchess were pictured standing alongside William and Kate in the Gothic Abbey last year when Meghan was pregnant with Archie. All eyes will be on how the couples interact at this year's ceremony. William and Harry have faced a turbulent time following a rift that began ahead of Harry's wedding to Meghan. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry share Instagram post with one big detail missing. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have shared a post about their attendance at today's Commonwealth service in Westminster Abbey, but there was one very important detail missing. Meghan and Harry will step back from their senior roles in royal family on March 31 and today the couple join the Queen, Prince Charles, Camilla, Prince William and Kate in Westminster Abbey for the annual Commonwealth Day service. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex shared a series of pictures from the event, with the caption, This afternoon, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex attended the annual Commonwealth service at Westminster Abbey on Commonwealth Day alongside Her Majesty the Queen and members of the royal family. The Commonwealth is a global network of 54 countries, working in collaboration towards shared economic, environmental, social and democratic goals, and the service today seeks to highlight the vast community which spans every geographical region, religion and culture, embracing diversity amongst its population of 2.4 billion people, of which 60% are under 30 years old. As President and Vice President of the At Queen's Underscore Commonwealth Underscore Trust, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have been passionate advocates of the Commonwealth having spent many years working closely with the next generation of Commonwealth leaders. The theme of the Commonwealth for 2020 is delivering a common future, connecting, innovating, transforming, placing emphasis on youth, the environment, trade, governance, and ICT information and communications technology, and innovation. From working to protect the Earth's natural resources and preserving the planet for generations to come, to championing fair trade and empowering the youth of today to transform the communities of tomorrow, the service celebrates the Commonwealth's continued commitment to delivering a peaceful, prosperous and more sustainable future for all. The event is the last official event on the list of engagements announced for the Duke and Duchess's so-called farewell tour. However, Meghan and Harry did not mention this in their Instagram post. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex may still carry out some private engagements with their patronages before they head back to Canada, where it is understood their son Archie has remained. Meghan has already carried out a private engagement with a national theatre, where she is the royal patron and made a surprise visit to a school in East London for International Women's Day. Meghan and Harry reunion with Prince William and Kate for today's Commonwealth service was not a warm one, a body language expert has claimed. The couples had an awkward exchange as Prince William and Kate arrived to take their seats for the start of the service. Ms. James described the meeting between William and Kate and Harry and Meghan as a rather odd greeting ritual. She added, it wasn't the warm reunion that we were all hoping for. The tension in Harry's body language especially was palpable. When he arrived, the minute he and Meghan had to drop hands, he immediately reached for his wedding ring which is a self-comfort. Even when she was beside him after they had stopped holding hands, he was missing her needing her support. Ms. James said Harry also clutched his jacket, signaling he was forming a partial barrier. She added, as Harry walked up the aisle, they both waved at the children, but his face otherwise was quite tense and unsmiling. William and Kate were almost the exact opposite. 
They looked very relaxed and there was no sign of tension. The Cambridges chatted together a lot, which helped them quite a bit. As the Cambridges took their seats in the row in front of the Sussexes, Megan was seen to mouth high and give a small wave to William and Kate, followed by a hello. Hello.